All right, hi everyone. Uh, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, my name is Fahim Niaz. I am the product manager for Anime Studio. Uh, today we have a very special guest, Victor Paradis. He will be going through some character and object rigging in this webinar. Uh, I believe it will be one of the most uh, interesting and uh, important webinars that we've uh, ever put together. Uh, it will help everyone out with uh, their existing rigs and as well as uh, new animators with uh, rigging in general within Anime Studio. Uh, we're also joined by Michi Katanese. Uh She is the host of the webinar. So if you have any issues uh, or any technical problems, please feel free to contact her. Um, before we uh, begin here, uh, there are a few items that we need to go over. Um, some housekeeping items that uh, we generally go over uh, at every webinar. Um, first of all, everyone is muted except for the panelists. So the three panelists I, na I, I named uh, are the ones that will only be able to speak and no one else from uh, the participants will be able to speak. We have a Q&A window where we recommend everyone to ask their questions. Um, this webinar and the way we formatted it is such that uh, Victor will go through his um, presentation and then at the very end, uh, approximately uh, 10 minutes before 11 a.m. Uh, Pacific Standard Time or Pacific Daylight Savings Time, we will uh, be answering those questions. So if you have questions uh, that come up at any time, please make sure to put those in the Q&A uh, section and uh, we will get to those at the very end. Uh, this well, webinar will be recorded and it will be available on our website in approximately, uh, approximately a week's time. Um, and if we do have any technical issues, please pardon us. So an introduction to uh, Victor. So uh, this is Victor's second uh, webinar with us at uh, Smith Micro. He's an award-winning animator from Santiago, Chile. Um, so uh, we thank him very much for joining us. He's worked on multiple projects, including short films, documentaries, and lots of commercials, including for folks like Chevrolet, Nextel, uh, the Chilean government, Nestle, and including us. We have actually commissioned him to do some work for us as well. He's a member of the Anime Studio beta test team. Uh, he's also a Lost Marble moderator. That's the community forum for Anime Studio. And as well, he's been involved with Anime Studio since 2006. He's got a world of experience. And uh, we look forward to this presentation, which will be definitely interesting. And with that, I am going to pass the mic over to you, uh, Victor. So um, Michi will do that. Thank you very much, guys. Hi. Uh, thank you very much for being here today. Um, we have very little t uh, time and I want to to talk about many tips and the, many stuff. So uh, I want to start with rigging a very basic character um, which is made of vectors. You can see uh, the character is here, separated on different layers for each part. So first I want to ask, ask you to go to the preference of the software, Edit Preference, and check Auto Name Bones and Shapes. Okay? We want to use it uh, later, but it is good to, to have it check it um, right now. So press OK. And now we're going to create a new layer, a new bone layer. So we will here create a new bone layer and we're going to call, call it Stigman. Okay. And we're going to put all these vector layers inside the Stigman, whoops, inside the Stigman bone layer. Okay. So now you can see the vector layers are inside. Now, to create a basic rig, um, you uh, generally start uh, with the belly bone. So we create a new bone for the belly here with the add bone tool. We create another bone for the chest, another bone for the head. And now to create the bones of the arms, we wanna uh, we will need the, the bones of the arms, the child of this bone. So 
we wanna press Alt on the keyboard, click, and now once the the chest bone is red, we wanna add the bones of the arms, two bones here. Now again, Alt and click over this bone and create the other two bones. So now, to create the bones for the legs, we're gonna make the legs child of the belly bone. So we add and click over the belly bone and now create two bones for the legs, for one leg, and uh, again, add and click and now create two bones for the other leg. So now, if we check how uh, our bones are working with the manipulate bone, you can see they are working uh, not perfect, but very well. Okay, we can adjust the strength of the of the bones with the strength uh, bone tool. So we can adjust the strength of each bone. And once we have this work made, we go to the offset bone tool and put all the parts of the character on their real position. Okay, so we take the legs and put here and here. Okay, so now we can try our character and it is working uh, very well, okay? But now, um, this is the basic rig you will find in, in many of the characters you see in the library, in many of the characters you can see animated on, on YouTube or, or any other uh, site. Um, and even this is the rig which is uh, uh, which uh, is made with the character wizard characters. But this rig have an important problem, and it is that you can't move the belly without moving the legs. So this, uh, if we are animating, this will be, uh, give us many problems. For example, if we want to uh, our character upper body part go down, we're gonna have to um, move the legs to touch the ground and if we wanna go back to the other side, we're gonna make the same with the legs again and this gives the sensation the, the character is floating in the air. Okay, so this part uh, is very important to move and we need a rig which uh, let us move the belly bone but the legs be fixed on the ground. So what we're going to do, I'm going to erase this animation. We're going to start again with the rig. I'm going to select all the bones I just created and erase them. And I'm going to start again on frame zero with the add bone tool, but instead of starting with the belly bone, I'm going to add a new bone here, which I, which will be our main bone. Okay, and we use, we will use this bone to move the entire character. So we create the main bone, then create the belly bone, the chest bone, the bone of the head, alt and click on the chest to create the arms, alt and click again to create the other arm. And now, instead of making the legs um, child of the belly, we wanna make the, the legs child of the main bone. So we alt and click this bone, and now create the bone for the first leg, alt and click again, and create the other two bones. So we test again our character. 
And now, if we want to move the upper part of the body, it can move without moving the legs, okay? And if we want to move the entire body, we can move this bone, okay? So now we're going to adjust the strength of the bones to get better results with the joints. And this main bone don't need to, to have any strength because we don't want to move uh, a specific points or a, a specific parts of the body with this bone. We only need it to move the other bones. So we're going to set the strength of this bone to zero. Okay? So now, once we have the strength uh, set, we go to the offset bone tool and put the bones on their original position. Okay, so now we have a character that can go down without problem and the legs will be fixed on the ground. Whoops, here. Okay, so that's uh, the first tip. Create a main bone to control, control the entire character so if we want to rotate the entire character, we move this, or we move or rotate this, okay? And if we want to move the belly, we just move the belly, okay? So this kind of construction works better, at, at least in my opinion, okay? Another tip is to add little bones on each part of the body, on the arms and the legs. We're going to add a little bone here, which will be child of this. So I go to the Add Bone uh, tool, Alt and click this bone. And now I'm going to create a little bone here. And I, w I will do the same with all parts. So Alt and click here, create the bone. Add and click here, create the bone, add and click here, create the bone. So now we have two bones, eight, uh, four bones, sorry, which will work as uh, stakes to maintain our character fixed on the ground on or with the hands fixed in some ob object. So again, uh, just like in the main bone, we don't need these four bones to, to have any strength. So we're going to select all of them with uh, a shift pressed in the keyboard. So I click this, this, and this. I have the four bones selected, and I'm going to reduce the strength to zero. So these bones don't move any specific point. So now, for example, if we uh, have an animation, for example, we have this um, this position for the character, we can select these two bones and lock it, lock them with the selection bone tool. I check lock bone, and now if I move uh, the main bone down you can see the feet are fixed on the ground and I can make the character, for example, jump. So he is going down, oops, here. And now he will jump. So we wanna make him um, jump here and here. And now in this part, I'm going to freeze this position. That means that I will add uh, keyframes for all bones. So I will add uh, keyframes for all the uh, angle channel for all the bones. And I'm going to add a keyframe for the translation channel for all, all bones. So we have the jump. And now, one frame after the jump is on top, 
we're going to select the two bones we have locked and we're going to unlock them. Okay? So now we're going to fix it um, later. This, okay, don't worry. Um, now I'm going to, uh, on, on this same frame, I'm going to select the hand stick bone and I'm going to lock it. Okay, so now the hand is locked and if I move the main bone, you can see the the hand is locked to, for example, a basket of, on, on a, bas uh, a bas basketball uh, play, for example. Now, you can see we have some problems here with the joints of the character. This is because the movement I just made uh, is it's over the limit of the movement of the legs. To solve it, I have to be very careful when moving the main bone when, when some bones are um, locked uh, to, to avoid this uh, kind of thing happen. So, for example, here, this is okay. And I also can adjust with the manipulate bone tool. I can tell the bones where they should be in this position. Okay? So, for example, I have the jump. I have the same problem here. So here it is better. Okay? And now I can make my character swing for example here now to the other side here again here and now he will be um, straight so you are gonna again here and here and here so you can see our jump is already working very well. Okay? So we use this stick to to fix the part some parts of the body on some other objects. So we can add a movement for the legs, for example when the character is going to the right the legs are going to the left and when the character is going to the left the legs are going to the right the same here to the left here to the right here to the left again and then normal so we get this okay so we have two tips now the main bone tool and these little bones which will help us to uh, lock some parts of the body. Okay? Now, I'm gonna erase this animation. Um, you can see I have the parts of the body in different layers. For example, there is a, a layer for the left arm, a layer for the left leg, a layer for the head, body, um, right leg, and right arm. Okay? This uh, separation is because I want to animate the layer order to give the sensation of uh, a 3D turn of the character. So, if we go to our stigman bone layer and double click it we're gonna open the bone the bone layer properties okay in this uh, properties we go to the depth sort tab here and we check animate enable animated layer order okay and now if we move for example on, on frame, frame 12 we move this layer from the top 
to be behind all the layers, we see in the bone layer a keyframe which represents a change on the layer on the layer order. So you can see the layer is going from top to back. Okay, and we can see the layers animated on the layer window too. Okay, so now if I erased this uh, keyframe, there there will be no uh, animation of the layer order. So I go back to zero. I'm going to put the left arm on the top. And for example, I'm going to make on frame one, uh, make a position like the character is looking to the left. Okay, so I have my character looking to the left. I'm going to freeze this pose, adding keyframes for all the, the bones. For example, I'm going to freeze the translation uh, channel 2. And now in frame 12, for example, I'm going to make the character to look to the right. So I'm going to move the joints to the other side, also the legs, and I'm going to move um, the arms a little. So we have this, the character is looking to the right and now to the left, and now he's looking to the right, okay? In the middle of this movement, um, here, we want to animate the layer order so the left arm will be behind all the other layers and the right arm will be over all the other layers, okay? And we want to do the same with the left leg, which will be behind the body, and now the right leg will be over the head and body. So now you can see the layer order change here, so we get um, this movement, example here, okay? So we have our character turning from one view to another, okay? To make this uh, movement more believable, we can create a, a new keyframe here in the middle of the, ex uh, the action to make uh, the path from top to, to behind uh, less visible. So here it looks more natural, okay? We also could um, lock a, a foot, for example this, and we could make our character go down, for example here, in the middle of the animation, and then go up. So, or, or, or go up. So this will uh, give a very uh, sensation of turning. Okay. We also can play with. Oh, sorry. We also can play with uh, the scale bone tool. We can select all the bones and reset the scale to get a keyframe. And for example, we can add. Um, we can add a scale on this leg, so it will look shorter when passing from one position to other. So we could continue we we could continue this movement to make our character to look uh, to the back. So for example, we could move the bone layer, the the main bone bone. We could move move the arms to the other side, the same than the legs, and this way we have our character turn, turning.
to the back. Okay, so this is uh, what the layer order does. Generally, you will have to change the layer order in the middle of the of your action. For example, here in the middle of the turn, and add some keyframes on the on the body to to dissimulate uh, the change. But this is the idea. Okay. I'm gonna erase again this animation, so we have our character normal. Um, another tip is about uh, the head construction. Okay. Um, I think the simplest way to set up uh, a head is to create a new bone layer inside the stigma bone layer. So I'm gonna create a new bone layer here and name it head okay and now I'm gonna put the head vector layer inside this bone layer okay and I'm gonna bind this bone layer to this bone okay so I select the bone layer now go to the bin layer tool and I'm gonna bind this entire layer and all the the stuff it could has inside to this bone so when I move this bone in the stigma, the the head layer will move. Okay. So now, as uh, the head layer is totally bent to this bone, I don't need uh, any strength to this bone because I manually bend the head layer to to it. So here I have the head. Okay. Now back inside the head I'm gonna create a new vector layer for the mouth so I I'll call it mouth and I will make a very simple mouth made of four four uh, points I'm gonna change the curvature of this point so I have this mouth okay and now I'm gonna paint it um, of this color, for example. So create shape, and now I have a mouth of this color. Uh, now I'm gonna create uh, the tip of of this um, of of this mouth. So I create a new layer. I call it tip. And I'm gonna add some point here for the tip, change the curvature, and I'm gonna add also some points for the tongue. So our character will have tongue also. And now I'm gonna paint it. I select the points of the tongue and I'm gonna paint it red, create shape shape. Now select the points of the uh, tip, select white, create shape, okay, and now we have a, a character with mouth and teeth. I know this looks uh, uh, horrible, uh, but we're gonna solve it. Now, inside this head layer, which contains teeth, mouth, and head, we're gonna create a new bone layer. And we're gonna name it mouth, okay. And inside this mouth bone layer, we're gonna put the tip and the mouth, okay. So we have a new group, a new bone layer inside the head. And now we're gonna go to the properties of this layer, double click it, and go to masking, and we're gonna say it hide all. If we press OK, you can see the mouth layer now is masking the seat and, and tongue layer. OK? So we have a better mouth now. Now, uh, we have a problem with the stroke here and here, right? So to solve it, 
uh, it's very easy. We go to the most vector layer, double click it, and in the masking tab, we're going to uh, uh, check exclude the strokes. So if we exclude the strokes, we can see the strokes of my mouth, and I have a mouth uh, very flexible, and I can animate, for example, my character to say O. Oh, I can change the curvature of the mouth, and I can move the feet to the up and the thumb down, so I have this mode, and I can create uh, almost any mode I I will want to do. So just animating um, two layers, we already have an animation of a mode, and we don't have to worry uh, on hiding the rest of the feed layer because they are already masked. Okay, there is only uh, one problem. I'm gonna generate an M, for example, here. So my character now has the the mouth closed. Okay, um, so there is only one problem with this kind of mouth construction, uh, and it is. Um, you can't use the automatic lip sync tool, which is uh, which comes with Anime Studio. So, you f to make your lip sync, you gonna have to to make it by hand. But in my opinion, it is not hard to do it by hand, and the results can be much much better than automatic lip sync. Okay. So, uh, I'm going to repeat this process to create the eyes of the character, but we're going to stop it uh, here for, uh, for now. And I want to show you another little trick to create um, better joints. Okay, so we have our character. Um, created with bones, using the strength of the bones to move uh, the, the vector layer points. But if we move the arm, you can see here we have a problem with the bending. It looks like a who's bend. So there is a way to, to solve it um, using a, a rig of a guy in the forum uh, called uh, Mancon, M-A-N-D-C-O-N. This guy created a very smart construction of, of bones to avoid this kind of goose, uh, goose uh, stuff. Okay, I take the Mancon rig, you can find, find it on the Lost Marble forum if you, you look it, I adapt this kind of rig to create a curved soft shapes. So I want to show you how to create curved soft shapes for for rigging. Um, to create this, I'm going. I need to know where exactly the points of my arm are. So if I select the arm. I can see where the points are, but if I select the bone layer, I don't see the arm points anymore. Okay. To be able to see the the points of the vector layer, even when it is not selected, I'm gonna select the vector layer, go to this little triangle here, and check paths. Okay. If I check paths. When I select the bone layer, I will be able to see the points even when the arm layer is not selected. So now I, I can see the points. I'm going to move the bones to start from the beginning 
and the joint the joint must be just in the middle of these two points okay so here the two bones touch and the other bones adapt to to the rest of the shape there here is the important part okay now i'm going to create a new vector layer from here to here a very a new bone sorry not not a vector layer a new bone from here to here to move these two little points so to create this bone i go to the add bone tool but it is important that that this new bone be child of the previous one so it must be child of this so i'm gonna add and click this bone it will turn red and now i'm gonna add the little bone here okay so i have a little bone here now i go to the vector layer here and i manually gonna um bind these two points to this bone so i go to the bin point uh, tool here and i'm gonna select with alt pressed in the keyboard i'm going to select the bone i want to bend so i select this little one it will be red and now without alt press in the keyboard i'm gonna select these two little points and press bend and now if i check the my rig you can see i can animate these two points by moving this bone okay and as this bone uh, is manually binded to the point it doesn't need any strength so i'm gonna reduce the strength to zero so now if i check my character you can see i can move the arm but also can move this little bone to have a better result with the bending so you can see for example if we compare this with this you can see there is a difference of for example to the other side here and here uh, here you can see this result it's much better than this okay but there is no need to animate this little bone by hand because this bone can automatically moves to the way we want so um, to get this we're gonna need to know the name of the bones do you remember at, at first i told you to go to preference and check auto name auto name bones and shapes now how it was checked uh, check it now if i select a bone you can see the name of this bone for example this bone is named five this bone is named six this bone is named um, 17 okay and so and all the bones have they or they own names okay um, now to create this movement uh, this little bone to move automatically what I need to know is to know the name of the next bone so do you remember this little bone is child of the previous one now i need to know the name of this bone so i select it and this bone is named six with that name with that name i'm gonna select the little bone here and open the bone constraint pop-up and i'm gonna create an angle control bone so i'm gonna tell it tell that the bone called six moves this little bone in a value of 0 0.5 and close it and now this means that when this bone bone for example move in 90 degrees 
this little bone will move 45 degrees okay so if I move now this bone you can see how the little one adapts to that movement okay so it is very useful and we could apply it to all the the parts we need to maintain the mass or we need to man to bend it uh, softly for example the 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 legs and also the the chest okay so uh now once it is construct construct i can go to the left um arm layer go to this little triangular triangle and uncheck path so now i can see i can't see the points and now i have my bone working but i think the the best part of this rigging is that if i change the curvature of this lead these two points for example i'm gonna select these two points and if i change the curvature for example here now it is more curved my arm will be more curved so with two bones i can create a very soft curve for a rubber um, arm character okay so you can see there is much difference between these two um, these two arms okay this um, this kind of rig can be applied not only for um, not only for arm and, and legs for example I have a Godzilla character that a friend um, draw and I rig which is uh, which has an, a tail and two points for each part of the tail and if I move it it has the same rig on any any of the parts and you can see the curve is very soft when I animate it okay so this this character um, has the, the same construction the little bone is child of this one and is is controlled by the next one so for example here the next one is called five if I select the little bone I go to the and go to the bone constraint you can see the bone called five is controlling it to 0 0.5 so the same with the next the next is child of this one and is controlled by this the same this is child as this and controlled by this okay so I made the same with the arms you can see here this point has no curvature is totally sharp and this have a very wide curvature and this gives a very nice effect of bending the arm okay so now if we see our character in action you can see it moves very softly softly okay so you can use with arm legs or any shape you want to maintain uh, soft okay so now I'm going to um, close close this character and I have this character al already rigged for all the arms so you can see all the arms have all, all the arms and, and legs have the little bone to control it the body also also have it and the legs so you can see it is working much better and also I create inside the head layer I create um, a new bone layer for the eyes and it includes includes a vector layer for the um, the pupils and a vector layer for the eyes okay so it is working just like the mouth so we have the mouth layer is masking the deep layer in this case the eye, eyes 
layer is masking the pupils layer. Okay? So the only difference between the mouth and the eyes is that uh, I bend each eye to to a bone. So to control to move the eyes, I just move the bone. So you can see I, I have it is easily to move uh, a couple bones than all all the points. So to make it, I'm gonna uh, to make it. I just select, create the bones, create two bones with no strength. They have no strength. Okay, and select the pupils layer. Go to the bin point tool. Select with Alt the bone I want to bin, and now select the point. Bend. Alt and click to select the bone. Now select the point. Bend. And I have this animation. You can see I can make my character blink, my uh, mouth talk, and I even can simulate some 3D turns very easily just moving the points of the eyes. Okay? So. Um this is these are some of the tricks I use uh in in all my characters. Okay, so of course if one of these tricks do doesn't work for you in any case you are free to, to not use it. There is not such such thing like a perfect rig which will work with all the stuff we we could make. Okay, we as we are working in two D all the the drawings are are very different, so there is no rig to all of them. Okay, now I want to pass to another topic, which is about rigging with images. Okay, I have. Mm -hmm. Hi, Victor. This is uh, Fahim. I just wanted to mention there's approximately 15 minutes left in the in the webinar. Um, so we hope to be able to leave about seven to eight uh, minutes for questions. So uh, just wanted to give you a time check there. Okay, okay, I I, I will show so the the arm doll. Perfect. Only. Yes. Okay. And I will also yeah. uh, ask the participants to uh, begin asking questions in the Q and A section, so mm -hmm. that we can start answering those questions. Thank you very much. Okay. Okay. So you know you can ask. In, in the chat window, uh, so I, I will try to, to answer all, all of these questions. I want to show you some tricks about rigging with images. I have this image and I'm going to scale it. And For example, when we uh, rig an image, we create uh, a new bone layer, put the image inside it and now go to the bone layer and create one two three bones okay and now if we check these bones you can see the bending doesn't work too good the arm is totally distorted and if I bend to the other side it is even worse okay and the and still distorting. To solve it, the normal way is to modify the strength of each bone. So if I reduce the strength of the bones, I will get a better result. Okay, for example, I, I have a better result here for this bending and the arm is still distorting but it is not. It is not uh, so awful like it was before. Anyway, this is not perfect, and you will find uh, errors on on the rigging. Right now, I'm gonna duplicate this layer, so I have another bone layer with the same arm, and I'm gonna create erase the bones and create new bones, but this time the bones won't 
be uh, close one from each other. So, for example, this is start here and ends here, and this one is start here and ends here, and the arm start here and ends here. So now, if I try it, you can see I get a much softer movement with the arm. Okay, and you can see the 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 hand is moving much better than in the previous example and I also can modify the strength to get a better result okay so moving the strength I can make I can get a better result and I also can move the bones uh, to be closer or 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 not so closer from each other to get the better result it is just testing uh, uh, until you get the result you want for example here I, I like how the arm is moving so uh, if I compare the two riggings for example here I move it here you can see in this case it's very similar but if I turn to the other side you can see this is much better okay so there is no not perfect rig for images also but having the the bones not so close so close from each other is a good start to rigging okay now um in this case the hand is working well but if I turn it here you can see this finger is getting very distorted okay so sometimes Im images and also vectors um, can need a new bone bone a new bone to maintain the the shape of the form so for example I'm gonna add a new bone which will be child of the hand so I add and click the hand and now I'm gonna create a new bone just to move just to maintain the shape of this uh, finger and I'm gonna modify the strength and now if I move the hand the finger is working much better than before just be because I add this little bone so probably during my animation I never gonna animate this bone but it will be, it, it will be there to help uh, to, to get the shape I want so you can forget this bone during the animation but you are sure your hand won't be distorted thanks to this helper um, thank you very much for watching this this webinar I'm sorry we are out of time there there is a lot of other stuff I, I will want to show you but let's keep it here okay thank you very much Victor so let's uh, answer some of the questions that uh, have come up uh, and if uh, we go over time uh, please apologize uh, we apologize uh, on our uh, on our behalf we apologize that we will be going a little bit over time but if you'd like to stay with us uh, we'll get some of these questions answered uh, so uh, first question is which is better uh, binding points to bones or making the bone strength all the way down I think uh, it is better to make a combination there uh, always there is character which works better with one or the other but with one or the other but a combination of binding a specific points to bind a specific uh, bone uh, bones and and also bone strength working on that uh, I think it is fast, faster and mostly it, it works better to use that two two options. 
Okay. Um, another question asks, uh, in one of your old videos, Rubber Man, he split the arm so there was an upper and lower shape. Is that still needed? Um, sorry, in, in, in which in which one? Uh, rubber Man. Rubber Man in this okay in the stick man okay here. I think so. This and may be in reference to an older uh, video of yours. Uh, uh, so. Okay. Well, uh, as I told you, um, all the characters are different, and there is not perfect rig which works uh, with all the characters. Probably I have characters which have uh, more or less bones. Um, so, uh, um, you, you can see how they work, but, but maybe this is part of a more complex rig I, I created. I, I, I create some several rigs. This, this is the basic but you can work over it. Probably I work over this the the one they they are talking talking about. Okay. Uh, the next question is for lip syncing. How far apart should the frames be? How far uh, parts of the? Hmm? Yes. I'm, I'm sorry, can, can you repeat the question? Sure. It says that for lip syncing, how mm -hmm. far apart should the frames be? The um, it depends of what you want to, to lip sync. Uh, there is no no rule to... Uh, there is some, some gives, for example, Preston Blair uh, and Richard Williams talk about some frames, but it, I think it, it, it is from your own view. If, if, if you see your, your character is working well with uh, very separated um, different for lip sync, it is working well. I think it is ma more an uh, an option, a personal option that uh, a rule I could give you. Okay, thank you, uh, Victor, for that answer. Uh, <clears throat> the next question is, is it best to use switches for hands or should they be bone rigged? Uh, it depends. I, 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 in my case, I use uh, switches because uh, in most cases, uh, the hands doesn't need a soft movement, a soft transition from one position to the other. So I, I prefer to not spend too much time to creating a, a good rig for a hand if I if it works only with a switch layer which change the hand from one one frame to other. Of course, if you have uh, a take where the hand is the principal uh, object in in that scene? Uh, you you will have to make a good rig for for that. But generally, for for character like characters like this, switch layers works very well. Okay. Uh, another question is in regards to uh, the manual lip sync that you were talking about. You mentioned mm -hmm. that. Uh, you found it easier than uh, auto lip syncing. Could you just elaborate on that a little bit? Okay, I I don't think it is easier. It it however requires more job because it it is a, a handmade job. But I think the result you get to put a little more uh, effort on doing it by hand it's much better than the automatic lip sync. Uh, that's uh, my opinion, of, of course. Uh, I, I prefer to, to create, for example, if I create an O for my character, uh, ho however, I don't have to create an O every time I need it. I just select the keyframe, copy and paste, and I have another O. So 
uh, it is not faster than automatic lip sync, uh, but it, it 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 is not so hard uh, to make it, and and the result will will be better. Okay, thank you. So um, many of the other questions uh, are related to uh, uh, more webinars. Uh, everyone's interested in seeing more of your webinars, uh, Victor. Uh, so uh, you're very popular in that sense. Uh, so that's great. Uh, thank you, everyone, for that, uh, for all the kind words to Victor. As well, um, there is a trial version of Anime Studio, uh, both debut and pro, available on our website. You guys can definitely um, uh, check that out, uh, and it's just anime.smithmicro.com. I do have a couple questions myself. Uh, uh, did you want to chat a little bit about rigging quadrupeds? Um, okay, okay. I want to talk about rigging quadrupeds, but there is not much much time on the webinar. But I want to. I take the quadruped I I used in the previous webinar, so proba probably you know it. Um, it follows the same the same principle of the main bone. In this case, I have a main bone which is this to rotate the entire character. Of this main bone, main bone depends our child the belly, the chest, and the head. Okay, but to control the legs, of course, I can move each leg, each each leg by itself. But I have these two bones, this and this. So if I want to move the two back legs, I move this one, and if I want to move the other two legs, I move this one. So this uh, uh, this two bones are child of the main bone tool of two sorry and it gives me the freedom to move the body up and down without affecting the position of the legs so for example if I have a groan here and I need to put my my character a little bit up uh, the 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 feet will still touching the ground, okay. So this rig is 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 use, useful for quadrupeds. Of course, you can get a better one based <laughs> on on this. But I think um, uh, the secret on on creating rigs for different creatures like. Um, a bear or a monster or, or or anything like that, which could have four or or more more legs, is to create these helper bones. Okay. Um, don't forget to to create helper bones. Uh, don't don't be uh, in the idea you need only the bones which actually control some points or, or or actually moves some part of the image okay these helpers work very well and if you discover you need one make it okay thank you very much for that uh, victor the next question and we have a few more questions to answer and then we'll end the webinar um do you use blend morphs in your animations yes a lot <laughs> Um, I always, when I create a head, um, I'm gonna open the stigma. When I create a head, uh, normally I create a new action, for example, for the left, and at, at the beginning, without animating anything yet, I, I move the point to the left to create uh, the the position on eyes and pupils and mouth for example here I move the mouth and the teeth so I start creating these actions so then if I am in the main line and I am 
animating, I can open the blend morph and turn my character to the left. So I generally create a um, blend morph to the left, another to the right, and another to the center. And I com combine the, them to to get uh, good, fast um, head turns. So I use it on most most of my projects. Okay, nice, uh, Victor. A couple more questions. Uh, one question is, uh, have you ever uh, rigged uh, uh, a bird's wing, uh, and how long do you think that would take? Uh, it is very easy, actually. Uh, let me see if I have... Um, um, I have a rig which I show in, in, in my classes here in Chile. But it is very easy. You only have to, um, for example, you create. Let's imagine here there is a, a beard. You create a bone for the body, for example, a bone for the head, and a little bone for the tail, and two bones for the. Um, wings so we already have a beard now um when a beard um flies you have the this uh, wing uh open here and in this position the wing is open but uh, you see the other uh, face of the wing so for example I create a switch layer. Um, I create a very whoops, a very uh, fast wing. So let's let's suppose we have this wing. Okay, I'm gonna name it wing. And now I'm gonna create another vector layer with the same wing, but example here but this gonna be on the other side so so I'm gonna paint it gray okay so I have this wing and what I do is to animate um, the wing from up to go down and in the middle of this movement I change the wing to I'm gonna adapt this I change the switch so the wing change um, the the shape and color so I simulate that the wing is turning you see so here is up you see the 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 back of the wing and here you see the top of the wing I don't know if this it's a good explanation, but uh, this way I create uh, most most of my wings. Thank you, uh, Victor. One last question, then we'll wrap mm -hmm. it up. Uh, do you prefer using a mask, mouth, and eyes over switch layers? I prefer the mask. Um, I prefer the switch layers on on things I know uh, I I want animate like hands which will be static always on uh, each each vector layer inside of the hand which we which we we will be st static but for head for a mouth um there is so much expression on the mouth that i need to i i prefer to to have it animable uh on one on or two layers Victor, can you answer one quick question? I know this will be fast. Someone is asking if you could show them how to delete a bone. Can you just do that really quick before we wrap up? Delete a bone? Yeah. yeah. It's, very, it's very easy. You go to the select bone tool, select the bone or all the bones you want to delete, and you press um, the button on the keyboard. In, in Spanish, it, it is called the suprimir. Delete button, delete button. So you press delete button, and there is no bone. Great. Okay. Thanks so much. All right, Fahim, here you go. 
All right, thank you. All right, guys, thank you very much uh, for um, taking the time to uh, join us today uh, during the webinar. Uh, I uh, wanted to mention a couple things uh, before uh, you head off here. Uh, we want to also thank uh, Victor for all his time uh, for taking uh, uh, you know out of his busy schedule to create this webinar for us, uh, and then as well, uh, the webinar will be recorded or has been recorded, and it will be available on our website at that link that you can see right in the front here of the of the presentation here my.smithmicro.com forward slash webinars forward slash anime dash studio uh, please check it out it should be available in about a week's time as well um, there's a huge community of anime studio users out there uh, it's lostmarble.com forward slash forum I would definitely recommend anybody that's new or an aspiring animator or someone that is new to anime studio to check that out uh, there's a lot of resources there, and uh, Victor's uh, work is uh, displayed there as well. He hangs out there, and he would be able to answer questions, and as well as other people would be able to help you out with your animations. So thank you very much. Uh, we look forward to seeing you again with our next webinar, and uh, you know, stay tuned to, and uh, watch out for your emails and and uh, add us uh, on your Facebook likes, and uh, and we look forward to seeing you soon. Take care. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye.